Come on up here. And folks, if we kind of come in a little bit closer here, the wedding party, that'd be wonderful. in here. I bet there's a lot of people here who didn't expect to have lunch in a show. That was wonderful, Larry. Thank you so much. And beloved in the Lord, as we enter into this time of uniting this beautiful couple in marriage with prayer and worship of our God, who has united us together in Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us pray. Almighty God, you have gathered us together in your sight and in the midst of your creation to witness the union of Larry and Lynette in marriage. This is a blessed occasion, and marriage an honorable gift that is instated and blessed by you. Marriage is that beautiful picture of the communion between Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. Jesus blessed and honored marriage with his presence and first miracle at Cana in Galilee, where he changed water of legal purification into the wine of gracious celebration. The Apostle Paul also commended marriage as good and right and honorable for all whom you gifted with the vocation of being Christ to one another as husband and wife. Lord God, we know that marriage is entered into reverently and deliberately in accordance with your purpose that we should never be alone, but to see that you are with us in and through the lives of one another. We thank you, Lord God, for joining us together in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And it's for those reasons that we're all gathered here together today in this beautiful place at this beautiful moment in both of your lives. So I'm going to ask you before God and before these witnesses, first, Larry, I ask you if you come by the leading of God's Spirit to be united to Lynette. Do you willingly and joyfully intend to live together in the estate of marriage as God intended it, to nourish and to cherish her as Christ loved his body, the church, giving himself up for her? Will you love, honor, and keep her in sickness and health and forsaking all others, remain committed and united to her as long as both shall live? If so, then say, I will. I will. And Lynette. Lynette, asks, I ask you before God and these witnesses, if you come by the leading of God's Spirit to be united to Larry, do you willingly and joyfully intend to live together in the estate of marriage as God intended it, to honor and respect Larry, whom Christ has called to give himself to you? Will you love him and care for him in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, remain committed to him as long as you both shall live? If so, then answer, I will. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God has gathered you here together at the request of Larry and Lynette to be witnesses to their vows and their commitments to one another and to celebrate this blessed union. They also seek your blessing and your commitment to love and support them in their marriage, to counsel them and to protect their relationship as being second only to each other, to their relationship to God, to uphold them in prayer and to walk with them as they build a life together with all of you as friends and as family. If this is your commitment, then say, we will. We will. Beautiful, beautiful. So we've all heard our commitments, and here are some words of God's commitment to us. Now I want you to listen closely to these words because I changed them a little bit. I picked a, a translation that might be a little bit more palatable to us because the original translation talks about submitting to one another. And I know we often don't like to hear that word that we need to submit, but let's hear these words that maybe clarify what scripture is saying a little bit. So this comes from Ephesians chapter 5. Out of respect for Christ, be courteously, courteously reverent to one another. Right? That's really what this submit is doing, is we're courteously reverent to one another. Wives, understand and support your husband in ways that show your support for Christ. Now Larry gets to provide leadership to you, Lynette, in the way that Christ does to his church, which isn't what we often think leadership to look like. Sacrificial leadership, not domineering, but cherishing. 
So just as the church submits to Christ as he exercises his leadership, you, Lynette, get to submit to Larry in that way, in that way that is courteously reverent to one another. Larry, most of it falls on you, buddy. I apologize, but here it goes. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wife, exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving and not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His works evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her, dazzling her and dressing her with silk and radiant holiness. That's how husbands ought to love their wives. They're really doing themselves a favor since they already are one in marriage. Being one in marriage is what this is all about, right? You're joining together two lives into one life, and that's what God has gifted you to do. Now, we know this doesn't mean leave, leaving our, our individual selves and erasing our individual selves, but what it does is it resets our individual self. It, it gives us a, a purpose in life. To give the love that we've been given by God in Christ to another is the ultimate call to holiness. So this idea of submitting to one another is really more a reflection of a God who submitted himself to you. So you're only taking what has been freely given to you and freely giving it to one another. That's why we think that marriage is so important. That's why we think that marriage in Christ is so important, because it's the framework, the foundation, that helps us to love one another selflessly and caringly, even when we know that things are not always going to be such a beautiful day, right? <laughs> Everything's not going to be perfect flowers and, and a wonderful meal, that there are going to be days and there are going to be times that are going to be hard and they're going to be a struggle. <clears throat> but the idea is that God has formed us to, to support one another, to lift one another up, and that marriage is that gift that we give to one another to do that. And your marriage isn't just for you. I mean, that's it's great if it were just the two of you and you can go off and live life and everything would be fine. But your marriage is a reflection to others of the love of God for them. So when they see you two selflessly loving each other, even in times of struggle and trouble, they see that there's a reason for that. And it gives you an opportunity to share the witness of what God has done for you in Christ. That selfless love, that caring love, that enduring love that the apostle is talking about, that every marriage reflects, you know, that, that love that is for the other and, and for the community as well. So with that, God has blessed us and to have this opportunity to do this with you, and we do so reverently, right, with that beautiful gift that God has given us in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, here we go. So, we have some vows to take. And we'll just do these vows in the sort of repeat after me kind of fashion. So you can face the net and repeat after me, Larry. I, Larry, I, Larry, take you, Lynette, take you, Lynette, to be my wedded wife, <laughs> to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, better, for, worse. for richer, for poorer, for richer. in sickness and in health. To love and to cherish until death parts us according to God's holy will. I pledge to you my faithfulness and share this day with you. I, Lynette, do that me. I, Lynette, take you, Larry, to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until death parts us, according to God's holy will. And I pledge to you my faithfulness and share this day with you. Friends in Christ, what the world counts as loss is actually gain. That in some ways, marriage is a little bit of a loss of ourselves, right? But what we gain is the love of another, and that undivided love that you get to share with one another in this day. What a beautiful gift that is. So, I think I have a ring bearer, don't I? Is 
You want to bring the rings up? This is your job. Yay! <laughs> And let's pray. Almighty God, you have graciously created all things to serve for our good. Send your blessing upon this couple who shall wear these rings as a constant reminder of their marital fidelity. Grant by, by your mercy they may live glad and faithful lives in this holy estate. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Receive this ring as a pledge and token of wedded love and faithfulness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Also repeat after me. Receive this ring as a pledge and token of wedded love and faithfulness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now that Larry and Lynette have committed themselves to each other in holy matrimony, and given themselves to each other by their solemn pledges, and have declared the same before God and before you as these witnesses, I now pronounce them to be husband and wife. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, God has blessed you indeed to share this life together. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, for the first time, Larry and Lynette has a message to me. Go Steelers. <laughs> I'm just glad I got through it. Right. A, lot of practice, a lot of practice went into that. <laughs>